can always count on Jim Knowles to tell it exactly as he sees it. Same can be said for Tony Gerdeman from BuckeyeHuddle.com. He joins us now. Gerd, thank you so much for spending some time with us. Thank you for having me. And I think it was telling what you asked Jim Knowles about the lack of a Buckeye defensive player of the game following the win over Marshall. Yeah, he said, well, sometimes you got to speak truth. And, and there was nobody worthy of that. He said several guys graded out as champions, which is what they want, but nobody played to the level of the silver bullet that they want, that they need, that this uh, defense needs to have, the standard being the standard, as they say. So, yeah, I just thought it was interesting. So I, I asked, and he was like, yeah, yeah, no, nobody earned it. And you could tell he, there were times where he didn't seem too – too happy on the day. Ryan Day didn't seem too happy on the day. And I, I wonder what we'll see from them this Saturday, given that kind of mood. I suppose one of the big questions is whether or not we'll see Ty Leak Williams. I think his absence in the middle of that defensive front four was keenly felt against Marshall. Yeah, anytime you move, you remove one of the best players in the country on the interior, you're going to feel it because whoever is replacing him isn't going to be nearly as effective and all of the one-on-ones that they want those guys to do up front you're going to have fewer wins in that area because he's not going to be one of them you know, the young defensive tackles stepped up they did their best but the consistency was missing and you see flashes here and there you know taiwan malone had a couple of good plays but it's more than just having a couple of good plays it's relentless uh consistency over and over again and you know what you're going to get they know what they're going to get from Tyreek Williams they know what they're going to get from Ty Hamilton next to him when it, when it's anybody else in there they don't know what they're going to get and that's why it's it's not great when you remove one of those guys and then expect uh, the same kind of results because you're not going to get it so he is day to day Ryan Day was hoping he'd be practicing on Tuesday I assume they hope he'll be practicing on Wednesday and move go from there and when Jim Knowles was asked, hey, would Taiwan Malone maybe start if Tyleek Williams can't go? He said, we're not there yet. We haven't talked about that yet because we're hoping that Tyleek Williams can go. So we will see. One area that the fence has been consistent has been the secondary Jim Knowles with praise for Caleb Downs, Lathan Ransom in company, particularly how they've limited explosive plays throughout this season. Yeah, and that's something that Jim Knowles he's had quite the history of uh, the, the explosive play in his time at Ohio State when he first got here what, three years ago now talking about the aggressive nature that his defense plays as quote unquote baked in five explosives into the defense. Like they can withstand that because they'll get it back in other ways. And then they went through that 2022 season and it didn't quite turn out the way they wanted. So they dialed back that aggression. And you saw last year that they ended up with one of the top defenses in the nation by being less aggressive. They're still trying to find the sweet spot of that. But as long as you're not giving up big explosive plays, it's hard for a head coach or a defensive coordinator to be upset about that. And I know people want to see more sacks or more shutouts or whatever, but as long as the plays aren't going past these safeties and given the, the fact that you got two really good safeties and, and three really good corners and nickels next to them and in front of them, they shouldn't be giving up a lot of plays. And this is a, a very – secure secondary for Jim Knowles for Ryan Day, which makes me think eventually they'll start doing more with it with the rest of the defense because they got guys back there they they can trust. But then, you know, part of it is also just winning the surest way possible with with the especially these early games. And I think you saw some of that on Saturday. Switching sides of the ball now, Buckeyes welcome Donovan Jackson back to the offensive line. And we really saw a glimpse of what this offense is capable of. Donovan Jackson returning, that gave you depth all across that O-line, and you had an offense that put up nearly 300 yards passing, nearly 300 yards rushing, a balanced offense full of explosive attacks against Marshall. Yeah, it's it was impressive to watch for those first three quarters when they were doing whatever they wanted to do and running the ball like they, you know, it's, it's special to watch Donovan Jackson when he's going, and he was going in this one, and he, he was winning at the point of attack. He was finding work, getting into the second level. And that's something that the coaches have talked about the, when the offensive line is hitting, hitting the line of scrimmage and then going and getting to the second level, that's what creates the explosive plays. And of course you've got the receivers out there helping and the tight ends helping. But when the sec, when the offensive line can get into a, and, and catch a linebacker 
and keep that guy off of the, the ball carrier, then you know you give Travion Henderson and Quinchon Judkins a little bit of a crease, and they can take it the the rest of the way. And the, the misdirections that they're doing, the stresses that they're putting on the defense all over the place just makes that running game even more effective. And we haven't really even gotten into the Will Howard running aspect of this game, of, of the running game, which will make it even more disturbing for a defense. Putting stress on defense, the name of the game, according to Ryan Day and company. And, yeah, Will Howard did talk about the fact that he wants to start running the ball a little bit more, but it's not part of the game plan quite yet. We also saw Carnell Tate uh, got rewarded with a couple of uh, passes thrown his way in the second half against Marshall. And Carnell Tate's maybe starting to move into the Terry McLaurin role of being a fantastic downfield blocker, doing the dirty work for the Ohio State wide receivers, which is along Emeka Abuka and J.J. Smith to have fantastic games. And Carnell Tate's being rewarded for that hard work on and off the ball. Yeah, you know, you can trace the lineage of that blocking mentality of the, the selfless nature to back to like Evan Spencer in 2014 when you look at the blocks that he threw in the national in the, uh, the semifinal game against Alabama and you follow that up with you know Terry McLaurin and, and, and Johnny Dixon and Paris Campbell and Chris Olave and Jackson Smith and Jigba and you know, th there's a lineage that um, of, of like I said the, the blocking and the self selfless nature where you get as much enjoyment out of that as catching a touchdown, as, as much enjoyment of seeing somebody run past you, knowing that you sprung them or that you kept them clean as you do catching a touchdown on your own. And then when you do that, you know, you, you can't help but want to get that guy involved if you're the quarterback, you're the offensive coordinator. And we saw, I think it was the Western Michigan game, Carnell Tate, about 15, 10, 15 yards downfield, putting a defender on his back on a run on the sideline. And he seems to really relish that role but is also very much a dangerous weapon as a receiver. And I think you're going to continue to see more of that. He would be the number one on most teams around the nation. And here he's one of, I guess, you know, three one A's basically. Competition ramps up for the Buckeyes beginning this week as they open up Big Ten play at Michigan State. This is a much different Spartan team than we saw in recent years. Jonathan Smith is the new head coach and really a roster makeover, which is possible in this new age of transfer portal. Yeah, and when coaches talk about culture and the foundations and all of that, you're trying to do this. Jonathan Smith is trying to do it on the fly right now, and uh, sometimes it can go well-ish, but sustaining it is is another story. You know, talking talking about Deion Sanders a year ago. Looked great at the start, did not finish well. And that's part of the, the culture and the foundation that Jonathan Smith is trying to create and establish. And I think there's some interesting talent, but you've got to get all this talent to work together to to meld and to you know, hate losing as much as they, they want to be winning and put in the time to get that done and to accomplish that. But and they've got some good pieces, and I, and I think Jonathan Smith is a, a good young coach who did well at Oregon State. Uh, but this is going to be the, the biggest test they've had. The good news is they've been tested all season long, and they've already they, you know, they won on the road. They lost a close one on the road at, at ranked BC. So this is a team that has been in some close games this season going up against a team in Ohio State that has not. So I think there's a little bit of an, an advantage there for Michigan State. They just have to be able to use it. But how much of an advantage? Yeah, Boston College course head coach Bill O'Brien, who is the Ohio State offensive coordinator for about three weeks earlier this season. That win for Michigan State at Maryland, that opened up a lot of eyes. And that's something that Ryan Day talked about quite a bit earlier this week. Yeah, we've we've seen some close ones with Ohio State at Maryland. So I think anytime you go on the, the road and win in the Big Ten, it's going to take some notice, especially when these are Michigan State and Maryland are basically a matchup game as Ryan Day likes to talk about the matchup games that Ohio State plays against you know, Penn State or Georgia or Michigan. Michigan State went on the road and won a matchup game. And they did it, as you just said, with a bunch of new players, new coaches, a very young sophomore quarterback who has an Aiden Childs who has a ton of potential, but also can make a ton of mistakes. And they were able to overcome that and get a, a win on the road where, what was it? Michigan won there by seven points last year or maybe in Ann Arbor, but they, they beat Maryland by seven points last year. Ohio State's had some close games against Maryland and Michigan, Michigan State went there and won. And when you win on the road in the Big Ten, you know, 
better teams have lost uh, to worse teams on the road in the Big Ten. I'll just say that. Absolutely. Defensively, what is Michigan State going to try and do to slow down that Ohio State attack? Yeah, which poison do you want to pick, basically? And I think it it starts with stopping the run. And if they're going to bring in the safeties to do that, then Will Howard's going to be able to hit those passes downfield that they really haven't had an opportunity to throw yet. But uh, the the options that the offense has with the RPO and just being able to straight run the ball, like these are difficult things for a, a defense to slow down and stop. If they can get some penetration on first down and maybe, maybe make second and third downs longer, I think that's going to be a key. But right now this Ohio State offense, after that bye week, after the open week, now they're going to be playing a second week in a row. They're going to be looking forward to this one, Big Ten starting. So they're going to be very ramped up. But also, you know, this is uh, Will Howard's first Big Ten game. Not that he hasn't played in big games before he has, but can they get after him? Can they make him uh, work a little bit quicker than he wants to? And maybe maybe make uh, some plays defensively in terms of some turnovers and things like that. Ohio State's been pretty careful with the football. Maybe if, I think they would need uh, uh, you know two or three turnovers to make this a four quarter game, and maybe that's uh, what will change the uh, the outcome for the Spartans. Yeah, Will Howard said he expects Spartan Stadium to be popping. We'll see if the Buckeyes can snap the Spartans and crackle their way to a five and zero start or four and zero start after beating Michigan State. I want to thank our guest Tony Gerdman from BuckeyeHuddle.com. Gerd, thank you so much. Thanks, Mark.